Darling? Is that on? John. Jill, get hold of uh, Darling and Henderson. Tell them to get here right away. Mr. Darling's out of the office, St. John. Mr. Henderson is in with the minister. With the minister? Henderson, are you sure? Quite sure, Sir John. Thank you, Jill. I'm not asking you to sneak, Don. I'm not asking you to be disloyal. Your loyalty to Wilder is your most appealing characteristic. But you must every now and then ask yourself whether you're being quite fair to yourself. Especially now that Sir John is an ambassador with no ambassadoring to do. I suppose you learnt the trick when you were a business consultant. Uh, what trick? Why, leaving somebody so far out in a limb that they chuck it in out of sheer boredom without even a golden handshake. Now that, for you, Don, is a staggeringly uncharitable thought. Besides, there are no golden handshakes in the Foreign Office. So why don't you just ask him to resign? I have. And he refused. Well, his actual reply was he'd see me fry in hell first. In which case, Minister, I suggest you uh, get yourself a flame-proof jumpsuit. <laughs> you could try to sack him. No, he has friends among the cabinet. Well, if you think you're going to drive him, Dotty, through do boredom, you don't know John Wilder. For C, which is why I asked you to come here. He's about as capable of remaining inactive as Vesuvius. So, the sight of that bleak desk being what it is, he'll move. Any time now, he'll move. Knowing his style, I expect a spectacular eruption. I just want to know when and where it's coming. He doesn't invariably have me on his early warning net. That's not what I hear. Snooping on my master's not my forte, Minister. If John's out, then so am I. Well, it's very noble of you. But managing directorships on a scale to which he's accustomed aren't two a penny these days, as many of our top-flight managing directors are finding out as they pad around their local golf courses every working day. And I'm sure you don't want to end up as his caddy. If that's all, Minister. Oh, John, I suppose you have no idea where Lincoln Dowling might be hiding? No, Minister. I think you have. Anyway, think over what I've put to you. If I turn you down, you'll invite Dowling. No, Don, I have quite other plans for Dan. What's D-I-S, full stop, W, full stop? Mm -hmm. Estate agent shorthand should be forbidden by law. Dishwasher. Oh, they could have left in the age. I mean, it's not even as if they're buying space. It's their own handout run off in the office. It's habit and a congenital lack of respect for the language. All they're interested in is COM. COM? Commission. And what does a foreign office bachelor want with four bedrooms and three loos? Well, I never specified loos. Anyway, what's wrong with this? I've grown out of it. Here you are, 
gorgeously snug and you have to go and want to live in Mayfair or Belgravia, uh, Regent's Park, or as this agent quotes you, the better parts of Westminster. What's happening to you, Lincoln? I've just become more ambitious. Ambition could make a fool of you. I'm not staying here. Oh, don't be a fool, Lincoln. Trying to emulate John, struggling to get into the same league, you'll only get hurt. Look what it's done to him. Is that what you want? You know what I want? Or rather, who? Oh, I'd never come and live with you, Lincoln. You might when I live there. Three, four, nine, two. Hello? Hello? I do hate people who do that. Well, burglars sometimes find it professionally necessary. Yes, and you soon have them calling if you're going to live in Mayfair. But Lincoln, how does a young, young-ish diplomat like yourself on a modest fixed Whitehall income expect to keep up a pad like this? I could be in the pay of the Russians or the Chinese. You never know, you may be watching the arrival of the coolest traitor since Kim Philby. What do you trait never? Trait? Trait. What I could do is succeed in business without really trying. There you go again, trying to be like John. I do hope you know what you're doing. I have three firm offers. Two from merchant banks, one from a construction firm. John again. His industries both. Well, it might be easier to find the lady than find an industry John hasn't been in or been booted out of. Don't be a bitch, Lincoln. Bite if you like, but don't scratch. Before I leave the department, I'd like to see Garfield Kane develop a limp. Lincoln? Oh, I know you like him. What? The poor man only takes me out to dinner very, very publicly. And to his flat, very unpublicly. Oh, what do you expect? Should he have me gre greeted at his penthouse door with a fanfare for now's old cavalry? You know what I'm talking about. One thing, though. You do make the most delicious coffee. More, please. Lincoln, do you suppose that was a burglar? I've tried Dowling everywhere. And try at least six other places he might be. I need those big ears of his. But he may be a thousand places I don't know about. Have you tried his flat? No. Try it. Well, he won't be there this time of day. Try it. I have, John. Uh, there was no reply. Oh, you mean that perhaps there was? Don, if Pamela is there, there's nothing to get read around the neck about. Yes, Sir John. Jill, Dowling is at his flat. Tell him to get in here immediately. Yes, Sir John. Thank you. Don't be a moral ostrich, Don. Gets in the way of your work. You seem to forget that your loyalty is not to Pamela or to anyone else, but to me. Don't talk to me about loyalty, John. Not to me. Not today. Why especially today? Oh, forget it. What happened today? Mm. Well, in India, a few hundred people died for lack of food in their bellies. In Africa, a few from far too many bullets in the head. And in concentration camps all over the world, some prisoners of conscience, no doubt, had their ribs smashed in. But what happened today, Don, here in this department? Here, John? Here. Here, John. The Minister of State, Mr. Garfield Kane, MP, invited me to change sides. And, as you didn't... I'll get my reward in heaven. What makes you so sure I didn't? I know you, Don. You always back winners. Yes? Mr. Dowling will be in soon, Sir John. He has a prior appointment with the Minister of State. Thank you, Jill. Kane's been looking everywhere for him. So it seems that we all... Well, now, if you can manage a week here next time, Coover, I'll prove to you just how far London's catching up on Paris for the gourmet. Uh, wishful thinking, Garfield. <laughs> and you too, if you can spare the time, Minister. I never have time to enjoy food in Paris, let alone in London. <laughs> but then I have simple tastes. Oh, I remember. I developed a taste for roast beef when I was here during the war. Oh, well, now, I'm very grateful to both of you for making the trip. Now, all we need is action at both sides. Oh, my company is deeply interested, Garfield. I can give you that assurance now. Yeah. I don't want to sound over-optimistic, but I feel sure there will be no objection from the Kidossi. Paris so weak today, then? Mm, I can hardly wait. I need only the slightest pretext. My passport looks like a travel warrant to Orly. Au revoir, Monsieur le Ministre, merci. À très bien, Monsieur. À bientôt, à Paris, j'espère.
Well, Frank, what do you think? As long as there are equal shares, joint responsibility, equal publicity, and no patriotic one-upmanship, you can count on National Electric to support you. Oh. I've always held the view we could get together with Electronic Français on big overseas projects. Reservations? We'll need strong safeguards. I don't wholly trust the French, or for that matter, politicians like yourself, Garfield. And you're not going to stick your noses into the business side. Well, you want the juicy jobs in the developing countries. And you want us in there. And the Chinese and the Russians out. Mm. So, mutual interest, Frank. I must have strictly equal status to the French managing director. Oh, I'll see to that. Good. Brandy? I have 120,000 men's noses to keep to the grindstone. <laughs> nice meeting you, darling. I gather we may be seeing uh, much of each other. Well, I hope so. I'll see myself out, Garfield. So, it's up to you, Lincoln. What is? You set up an Anglo-French consortium with Frank Orwell and your French friends to attack the world electronics market. And you ask me here to watch you do it. Well, congratulations, Minister. Impressively smooth. Well, what's my job? To parade down Whitehall with a placard saying Garfield came for PM? Mm, well, that's a very nice thought, but you'd not do it with enough sincerity. And that's not the way a promising diplomatic service officer should talk to his minister. Now, for me, the age of serfdom's nearly over. Mm, yes, I had heard about your plans to break out and invade the free market, the uh, John Wilder territory. And uh, don't ask me where I heard. <laughs> Why not? Why? Well, might be embarrassing. Don't play games, Minister. Her ladyship? She wouldn't tell you anything. Oh, come now, Lincoln. I know that she has you helping her on my charity committee. And I know that you have her helping you um, domestically. But what happens outside office hours concerns me very little. I wonder whether a Minister of State has ever been taken from this office straight across the river to St. Thomas's casualty department. For a diplomat, Lincoln, you are thin-skinned. I'm offering you the best chance you ever had. What's your present salary? You know to the penny. After allowances, it's still under 3,000. This consortium needs a foreign expert. It could be you. I'd be seconded on the same salary. No. No, you resign from the service and take up a contract with the consortium. My price would be high. Well, I had in mind 10,000. And I get the contract before resigning? Of course. Look, I'm not trying to con you into the wilderness. Why? Well, I must say, I'd expected little hesitation on your part. I mean, on 10,000 a year, you stand a better chance of making her ladyship, don't you? You shouldn't have been a minister of state. You've got all it takes to be a pont. <laughs> Well? Well, what? You can work with me, or with Wilder, who can only lose. I'd have to see the colour of that contract first. Lincoln? You must be the most elusive private secretary in Her Majesty's diplomatic service. I'm sure you won't mind if I join you and my wife at lunch. Where are we going? The Cordon Francais. Yes, I thought we might have a talk about your session with Kane. Nothing to talk about. It was tedious. Very promising, though. Lincoln, I know what he is up to with National Electric and Electronic Francais. Then why ask me? What did he offer? That's beneath contempt. My question, or his offer? Lincoln, that consortium is not going to happen. I have a better idea. Tell me, Lincoln, what do you think of the brandy? Well, you should know a good brandy. 
Oh? He wasn't getting at your age, darling. Were you, Lincoln? I don't think he was. It's only to look so sheepish, Lincoln. This isn't the Last Supper. But if you intend to become a tycoon, we're to start learning to behave like one. With a little bit of practice, you may not look out of place behind a cigar. Pamela, remind me to get in a stock of best Havanas for him when he moves to Mayfair, or wherever it is he aspires to. Oh, no, 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 it wasn't Pamela. If you spend half your mornings on the phone to West End agents, you must expect a little gossip. I don't have to account for my private life to you or anyone. Are you sure? When your private life gets in the way of your professional, you'd better at least to foreign office security. Well, yes. And to me. Oh, no. And to me. I think I'll just go and call the boxing board, see if they've got a spare referee. No, Pamela, it's essential that you're here when Lincoln answers the question that I'm going to put to him. Oh, for heaven's sake, John, stop behaving like a cat pawing its prey. He needs careful handling just now. He's at a stage when he could take off like the whiz kid that some people are making him out to be. Or he could fizzle out like a damp squib. My career's my affair. It's not in your keeping. You're still my private secretary. I know Kane has bribed you to keep an eye on me. Nobody bribes me. Then how do you propose to pay for the properties that you have been looking at? My affair... My business. Some maiden aunt has left you a fortune. I've never inherited a penny in my life. The richest member of my family died owing 11 pounds, seven and sixpence. John, you're being quite horrible. I'm teaching him to grow up. When you get round to inspecting flats with a rent of 2,000 and a half plus, it's clearly not limited to your foreign office salary. There is private industry, some of it not exclusively yours. Now, we're of the same breed, Lincoln, you and I. You're a late developer. But the killer instinct's there. That's the one thing I like about you. He's not your son. Oh, I should have been bloody worried recently if he had been. All right, Lincoln. How are you going to pay for this two and a half thousand year Mayfair flat? Plead the Fifth Amendment. Don't you answer that? I have offers. From Kane? And elsewhere. Well, I know you had some harebrained scheme with Kenneth Bly. That would have only led to bankruptcy. No, not Kenneth Bly. What salary do you need, bearing tax in mind, to live in the style to which you would wish to become accustomed? Oh, come on, Lincoln, I'm trying to be practical. 10,000 a year, plus expenses. And that's what he offered you? Lincoln, until two weeks ago, until Kane got at you, you were considering 6,000, without lavish expenses, enough to keep you, say, in Hampstead, but not Grosvenor Square. You're just fishing. The offer came from Grafton's Merchant Bank as foreign advisor, a contract for three years. And what seedy little private eye did you get to dig that one up? I got Grafton's to make you the offer. Thanks for the dinner, Pamela. Don't be juvenile, Lincoln. You no more want Kane to get through than I do and quite possibly for personal reasons, even less than I do. I'll top his offer. By how much? The difference between a mere flat and a penthouse. Have some more brandy, Lincoln. Might help you to make up your mind. If the answer is yes, I shall want you to stay on. We shall need to work through the night. If the answer's no, then you'd better leave before my other guests arrive. I could say yes and still work against you for Kane. If you agree to join me, I'll take your word for it. As long as you say it in front of Pamela. Lincoln, don't lose your ash. Nothing odd about meeting in a sauna. Some of my best thinking is done in saunas. Oh, well, it's only producing some of my worst. <laughs> you mean you've never had one before? Uh, baptism of fire. <laughs> never again. 
Phew. Can't be turned down a bit. Ah, only just come in. Yeah, I wish I hadn't. But it's only, uh, it's only on a hundred. You've got a few minutes. You'll come through, Henderson. Oh. Nostrils burning. Oh, and a few other parts. Oh, I say, are you sure this isn't harmful to the old ticker minister? Oh, mine's thumping away like one of those heart lung machines. Well, there's no record of anyone actually having dropped dead in the sauna. No, they just liquefy. <laughs> we had half a dozen dancing girls in here, you'd not be so floppy. You'd still not catch me staying. Anyway, I'm, uh, I'm glad you had second thoughts about your future, Henderson. Yes, but I didn't know that part of the deal was holding meetings in hell boxes like this. How's Wilder taking to the monastic life? Well, he hasn't started saying his prayers yet. I don't expect him to take vows not to hit back. He knows about my consortium with the French? Enough. How much is enough? He's uh, flying to Paris on Friday. Who's he meeting there? Uh, he hasn't said. Still, whoever he meets in Paris, don't do him any good. What are you doing? Making it hotter. Don't forget the cold plunge, Don. Oh, no, never mind the ifs and buts, Carrie. Just recap what you told me yesterday. National Electric's worth about 300 million. And I don't think Norton would argue if I put a value of 240 million on his company. A merger would make the combined firm the biggest in its field in Europe. The biggest outside the States. And finance? Oh, it shouldn't be difficult. And uh, quite unofficially, of course, I can promise support of my people. The commercial reconstruction board sees the merger as a natural marriage. The new firm should soon move up to gross annual sales around the 600 million mark. Strictly on commercial grounds, it has everything in its favor. Rapid growth, cost reductions, an infinitely more efficient overseas marketing setup. We should be able to stand up to any political criticism by promising vastly increased exports. And with Carey and his board throwing his weight about, I don't see how anyone can put a stop to it. I'm convinced, John, subject to details, it's up to National Electric. Well, our board, I know, will not welcome any merger. They see their muddled old heads rolling in the gutters of the city of London. <laughs> what about your managing director, Orwell? He'll fight, John. He wants us to go ahead with tie-ups with the French. That's his baby. No, 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 that's Keynes. Now, what support can you expect from the rest of your board, Wendell? Three of the younger ones, immediately. Others are open to persuasion, provided they can be sure of places on the new combined board. Ah, uh, we'll see that they get tucked in. Lincoln, how about passing round the Armagnac? Oh, certainly. I should like to think that it would be less than a week before the press gets the first whisper. And Wilder not mentioned once, not even linked with that damn thing. Now one of you must have had some inkling. No, Minister? Not even a whisper. I heard there was an all-night meeting at Wilder's house with Wendell and Norton present and uh, others. And what happened to that Paris trip he was supposed to be making? Cancelled. If it was ever on. Far from wrecking the consortium in Paris, he's crippling its chances without even moving out of his office. He hasn't been here for days. Then where the hell has he been? Doesn't anybody check? Shouldn't you know, Lincoln? Not that you should admit to your extra duties with a temporary civil servant present. All right, Henderson, leave us. But don't roam too far. Well, if Fowler is suggesting because I'm also with intelligence I should know of Wilder's movements, he's forgotten what it's all about. I doubt whether they even give him a second look. Then they should be carpeted for dereliction of duty. Yes, Jane? Mr. Orwell is here. Show him in. I'd like you to say, Jason. And you too, Lincoln. Now, don't worry, Frank, you're among friends. Which is quite a change. Sir Jason Fowler is Deputy Undersecretary at my department and must necessarily be in the picture. And Lincoln Darling have already met. He'll most likely be working for the consortium. 
If it ever comes to anything. Oh, now, don't throw in the sponge, Frank. You've only just started fighting. I've already been knifed in the back twice. Mm. Well, it's your spine they're going for. They know it's your weakest part. As long as you don't leave a trail of blood right through our foreign office corridors, that kind of thing is apt to bring out the worst in our gunboat diplomats. I must say you're taking it very well. Well, I've never got in for a desk banging and foot stamping. It's bad for the heart. Wilder's behind it, isn't he? I mean, he must be. Mm. Garfield, I don't know what you stand to lose, but they're after my shirt. I think you've all got a Wilder complex. You've got no proof he's behind it. I have a member of my board named Wendell, who should have been christened Judas. He's in Wilder's pocket, and he's already got half the board behind him, with at least another two coming out in goose pimples. How do you know? How do I know what? He's in Wilder's pocket. He's twice taken a company car to Belgrave Square recently, to Wilder's house. Wilder bested him on a deal two years ago. And ever since he's seen Wilder as some sort of heroic figure. This merger has to be stopped, Garfield. I don't mind how. Mm, and you don't know how. Now, don't panic, Frank. That's just what he wants. My contract is still six years to run. I'm too young to be put out to grass, and golf bores me. What is more, the revenue are tough about golden handshakes, and Wilder would do his damnedest to drive holes in my contract. He'd be too busy to bother. Lincoln. I want a briefing on my desk by this evening, giving every reason why a merger between Norton's and National Electric is not in the public interest or in anybody's. Jenkins, tell to John Wilder and tell him I want to see him as soon as possible. In your office? Wherever is convenient. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Minister. I'd have to see the merger man at the Board of Trade. And I have an important meeting on this afternoon. Then you and the man from the Board of Trade can work through the night. I want that report on my desk by 7.30 in the morning. If you'll excuse me. So I hinted at a highly classified meeting. Which I suppose is what this is. Though why I should hold your hand while you're trying to find somewhere new to live, I really don't know. You're a grown boy now. Oh, that's why. Looking for skeletons. Odd. You can't depend on anybody. You know, there's something very peculiar about people who go around peering in cupboards. Ah. Did you expect to find that there? Yes. Didn't they leave a barman? Always be sure when taking over a new place that the previous owners leave enough booze for you to get over the sadness of an empty home. Lincoln, they didn't. Why do you never believe a word I say? Because you're just like John. Just as big a liar, if a more romantic one. Who did leave the hooch, really? The estate agent. As bait? As a service for which I paid. <laughs> well, cheers. That's the flat and all who sail in her. Oh, no, Lincoln. No sailing or any other sport. I say yes. Does it make you feel good, John, to have the minister come to you? You wanted to talk. Still, you should have accepted my invitation. To meet in a sauna bar, you make it sound obscene. You saunas, and you could look the world in the face. I can do now, without. I acted too hastily. I should have kept you busy. Instead, you chose to try and cut me out. That only works with terrified non-entities. Why are you against my consortium, my dear? Because it stinks. I had a discussion today with Orwell and his French counterpart, Cartier. And we all agree there could be an important chair for you in the consortium. Forget it. I don't hedge my bets, Kane. Nor should you yours, if you intend to go into business. I play politics till your heart turns to stone, but don't take me on in business. You'd only get hurt. And I don't think you're a masochist, despite your sounders. Oh, hang on a moment. I think he's just come in. Lincoln Dowling. For me. Hello, Lincoln. I'm working out just why your merger shouldn't go through. 
are you? For Kane. He's pretty cock a hoop. I can't think why. He thinks he's found a cast iron way of stopping you. He's having your merger referred to the Monopolies Commission. Good. I thought that's the way he would move. Thank you, Lincoln, and good night. Uh, don't stay up too late. I shall need your mind at its sharpest and most devious in the morning. Baggage boy are you today, Don? The ministers or the ambassadors? One of these days, darling, your lip will land you on the floor. Or are they your very own? On whose behalf do you ask? Mine. Only you make such a do about your intelligence connections these days, I sometimes wonder who you're not spying on. It's a role, I must say, that suits your personality. And you're in the role that suits yours, running errand. Pamela must be out of her mind. Ah, setting us all an example, Henderson. Which way? North, south, east or west? You know, I never did manage to master the compass. Uh, which way, Jason, to Wagga Wagga? Very well. I presume it is bona fide foreign office business. Well, what else? The entire press is packed with reports on what politicians will do to kill my merger. And all you're concerned about is where Don's going. Where's your sense of proportion? I thought the Monopolies Commission didn't worry you. I don't. But you do. What if I said that Don was off to Paris? No point in warning the Bluebell girls. He's safe. Who would you warn? Not Kane. All right, then. Don's off to Paris. Is he having trouble at home? Only if he's off to Paris, why should he leave a message for his wife telling her he's gone to New York? Oh, yes, I forgot that you also worked with those professional nosy Parker boys from intelligence. Has it not occurred to you that you are treading high wire held at one end by Kane and at the other end by me? Either of us could drop you from a great height. Don't worry. I have a safety net. Will that be all, Ambassador? Yes, Lincoln. Jason, I know that Wilder was in his office at 6.45 this morning, having presumably been tipped off by his Fleet Street chums at the contents of today's papers. Now, that doesn't indicate a man who's going to throw in the sponge. It's a myth about early risers. They're not necessarily the ones who get things done. Often they're just insomniacs who can't bear to lie about any longer in a rumpled bed. Hmm. Well, you'd best assume that Wilder isn't one. Well, after this lot, he should be. His merger couldn't possibly go through in face of the public wrath. This will ignite. Well, the Commons will certainly be up in arms. And I've managed to persuade Headley, as a leading trade union backbencher, that his principles have been affronted. He's going to issue a statement saying that the merger will put 6,000 men out of jobs. How can he know? Well, he can't, but the figure has a suitably alarming ring. Well, you know, if Wilder had a trace of decency, he'd resign now. Huh. Do you think he might, Mr. No! Pity. He's still the outsider to you, isn't he, Jess? He belongs in the marketplace, not this office. And now there, if you're not careful, is where we might part company. Don't forget. And certainly not while I'm the minister here, that we are the department for special situations and trade. And that calls for men from the marketplace. I'm one. Ah, but you do have an instinct for the more civilized virtues of diplomacy. I'm a salesman, Jason. As an orphan, I had to spend most of my early life selling myself. You strolled through Eton and Oxford and then nobly offered your services to the country. In fact, you are less my kind, really, than Wilder is, so just disabuse yourself of this idea that selling is a dirty word. Yes, Jane? Mr. Dowling to see you, Minister. Oh, send him in, Jane. And uh, bring some coffee, will you? You may not know where Henderson's gone, but be sure Dowling will. Yes, I feel that that young man knows far too much for the peace of mind of any of us. His extramural work for intelligence is corrupting him. Good morning, Lincoln. You read the papers? Quite a killing, Minister. And what does your suspicious mind tell you could still stop my consortium, if anything? Don't count your French chickens yet. No. Wilder was up before daybreak. Mm. And busy by sunup. We were curious as to where Don Henderson has gone, do you know? Oh, yeah. He's gone to Paris. 
Oh. Not a cup for Mr. Dowling. Oh, no, if you don't mind, I have some clearing up to do for Wilder. Clearing up to do for Wilder. Now, that has a very comforting ring about it. The sound of impending departure. Hmm? All right, Lincoln. You believe him, Jason? I'm afraid I don't, Minister. Jane, get me suddenly at the Home Office. Immigration. Yes, sir. Only first-class passengers, remember. We've got him. Donald Henderson, you said. He's on a BOEC flight to New York, taking off just about now. Jason, come in for a moment, will you? And on the way, try to work out why Henderson should have gone for his master to New York. Wilder did say Paris. Oh, I have no doubt, Lincoln. Anyway, it was probably a dummy, dummy run to fool us. Us, Lincoln? Count me in or out, just please yourself. Latterly, you've hardly proved yourself one of us. I'd like to trust you, Lincoln. I'd like to very much. I had great hopes of you. You talk as though you were my father. At the moment, I feel that's a handicap that fate has mercifully spared me. Well, of course, you could tell Kane that Henderson's a British member of the American CIA. That would curl his toes a bit. Flippancy, as I've told you, Lincoln, is often a cover for the basest behavior. Even treason. Are you coming to help or not? I have an important engagement. Oh. Highly classified, no doubt. Highly suggested. If you'd bring the sideboard in, we'll have something to put them on. Yes, and if you'd bring in a chair, I'd have something more comfortable to sit on. Yeah, well, chairs, then. Link, where on earth did you find them? Oh, well, a bargain I picked up in the King's Road one lunchtime. After lunch? Hmm? And how many brandies? You mean you don't like them? Lincoln, they're absolutely hideous. Well, I was going to turn them into lamps, but uh, if you don't like them... Well, what matters is that you like them. You have to live with them. And you might. Oh, yes. Have you, um... Have you ever wondered who lived here a hundred years ago? I mean, who was born here, who died here? There isn't a blue plaque commemorating anyone famous, is there? All that concerns me is tomorrow, not yesterday. I also said you might live here. What, me? With them? I could always abandon them. I shouldn't think it's the first time they've been dumped either. Well? Oh, Lincoln, don't be ridiculous. I mean it. Yes, I know you do. That's what makes it so sad. You must stop rushing at life. Learn to pace yourself. <laughs> like Garfield Kane? No. Like the man you've more in common with, John. All we have in common at the moment are mergers. His big business merger. And mine with you. Lincoln, I never suspected. Oh, uh, you never saw it in the old place. I kept it in the attic, which had a skylight. It uh, soothes me to look at the moon occasionally. Only the moon? Sheraton. Yes, it's, um, it's very attractive. You sound doubtful. No, no, I, I, I like it. You mean it's not authentic, Sheraton? I said no such thing, Lincoln. But the bloody thing's not, is it? No, Lincoln. It's all our. Normal service restored so quickly. And the Brotherhood of Burglars know already. I carry a rather high priority. I mean at Whitehall, not among the criminal classes. Lincoln, darling. Yes, I'll be over right away. I thought something like that would happen. Still, it's better if you supervise the layout, if you don't mind. I do want you to like the place. Should I lock up afterwards? If so, where should I leave the key? Oh, I almost forgot. I have two. One for you. 
I mean, you may want to do more supervising when I'm not here. You know, you could get arrested for doing that. Sorry. Oh, take those out again with you, will you? Certainly. Leave it in the pram cupboard. We think you're right, darling. Whether we get the Anglo-French consortium or the all-British merger is academic to intelligence. But it is important that we penetrate any organization of such a size, selling military electronics and other defense equipment to foreign powers. You will hear further from us presently. Hello? Thank you. I suppose one day there'll be a night that doesn't go bleep. Hello? Hello. Uh, it's Dom. Oh, hello, Dom. Uh, can you hear me, John? Yeah, very clearly. Go on. Well, it's all fixed, John. It's agreed at a press conference. Uh, when did their news agencies put it out? Yeah, the last edition. I see. You should catch our first edition. Sounds good, Dom. Now, catch the next flight back. We're going to be very busy. Won't it wait, John? Stay till daybreak? No, I'm trying to get out of good old. Oh, he's had a busy day, driving me around antique shops. Where the hell are you going to put the stuff? Not for us. You going somewhere I shouldn't know about? No, it's business. Fleet Street. Well, then, let good old sleep, John. First edition is better. So there goes our chance with the Monopolist Commission. Nobody will lift a damn finger to stop the merger if the alternative is to let the Americans get control. Now look, if you'd like a tranquilizer, ask Jason. He's got a pocket full. I am about to have my firm snatched up by a bunch of Americans, and all you can do is to sit there and prescribe drugs. Well, you need electric shock therapy if you go on like this. The Americans will get nothing, and Wilder knows it. You've got Wilder on the brain. What the hell's he got to do with it? His messenger boy went to New York yesterday. Wilder's well in with the president of the American firm who are making this bid, and he's fixed this bombshell to scatter our MPs who are attacking his merger. Well, it will, won't it? Not if we show what's behind it and who, and convince everybody that our consortium is preferable to Wilder's merger. Don't forget, half my board, more than half by now, is grasping at the merger. It's a life raft to them. They know what will happen to them under the Americans. They'll be thrown overboard and left to drown. Well, they could always learn to swim. Now, come on, Frank. Your managing director will manage them. Direct. It's up to you to keep their heads above water. This whole American business is just a rumor to stir things up. Well, of course, it is conceivable that there is a genuine American bid. Oh, well, now you need a tranquilizer yourself, Jason. Yes, Jen? Sir John Wilder, see you, Minister. Oh. Well, show him in, Jen. I'm already here. You'll never get away with this. Once we show you're behind the Americans, you'll be completely discredited. You're too late, Kane. I can hardly be behind the Americans when I've just gone to great lengths to persuade an old friend of mine, the president of the American company, to hold off any bid as long as your get together with the French is called off. Arnold J. Eastman, Jr. will never forgive the French for what they did to him and his company in recent years. He doesn't share your fondness for frogs, legs, and garlic. Oh, no. You're behind the Americans, and I intend to make it known. Then you'd better be careful where you wag your politician's tongue. The only safe place is in the chamber of the House. There, at least, you can hide under the women's skirts of parliamentary privilege. There'll be no perks for you personally, should your merger go through. It would look too much like a fiddle. Which is indeed what it would be. 
The contract's already signed. I'm managing director for seven years. And some of your political colleagues came senior to you. See it not only as fiddle-free, but essential in the public interest that I run the group. As a minister of the crown, they would expect you to keep a dignified silence. Of course, you could always resign. But you're too fond of the soft line to chuck it in at this stage of the game. So it's up to you. Ball your head off to the public and press. If you dare. John. Do you think you and I could talk? What about Frank? Your top hat pension? Whether you should take up golf or growing sunflowers? I still say it's bluff. Oh, for God's sake. Get your head out of the sand, Jason. Oh, now, if you'll excuse me, gentlemen. me the Prime Minister. Mr. Kane insisted that he had no comment to make, but this evening he issued a statement from his home saying that he had resigned on a matter of principle. His resignation will enable him to make a full statement to the House of Commons tomorrow. And now, further news of the Midlands rail accident. Principal? He diddled his grandma and said it had to be done on principle. Hasn't got one, Lincoln. Hasn't got what? A grandma. He's an orphan. Even orphans have grandmas. They have to be grandmas. Anyway, he was a fool to mix it with John. You only come off worse. Really? Very much, really. Well, John, it's been quite a day. Ah. And it's not over yet. I don't think why you're here, though I can guess. He came to see me. No, you. I promised you a job on the new combine. You've got it. Your first task is an immediate sales recce in the Far East. That should keep you busy for at least six months. Now, if you don't mind, Pamela and I have some personal things to discuss. I can't think of even one. I'm not going to the Far East or anywhere else, Wilder. Then you're fired. Oh, no. I'm not becoming one of your executives, Wilder, to be tossed into the world's far corners at your whim. I'm becoming one of your directors on the new board. What have you been giving this upstart of yours, Pavela? Hallucinatory drugs? Call the office, then. Go on, ring them. And the higher you go, the firmer will be the confirmation. I'm on your board, Wilder, and there's nothing you can do about it. Besides, I've just taken a three-year lease on a new place in Grosvenor Square. It'd be such a waste if I wasn't in London to enjoy it. You're wasting your time. What's the address? The address? It's of Lincoln's new place. Flat 2, 190 Grosvenor Square. Well, your extra duties at the Foreign Office have paid off, haven't they? <laughs> Do your chums in intelligence make a habit of squeezing people onto boards, or is this a special for services rendered? Hello, uh, Prentice and Walker. This is Sir John Wilder. I want you to send round a box of your very best Havana cigars to, um... Uh, yeah, all right, get a, get a pencil and paper. I wouldn't say no to one now. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, the, uh, the address is Lincoln Darling, flat two, 190 Grosvenor Square. Yes. Yes, thank you very much. You'll find a cutter on the drinks table. Oh, that's all right. I have my own now. Thank you. 